So hi, everybody. Miss Judy here again, and I'm here with the Sunday School lesson for us. This week, I'm going to have to pretend like I can see you, but you can see me. So we're going to start off like we always do with some names. I've got some names. I'm going to look for some people out there. And let's start out with Jesse. I see you, Jesse. Stand up. Stand up nice and straight. Jesse, Jesse, Bobessi, Banana, Banana, Fofessi, Fifi, Momessi. Let's all say his name. Jesse. Okay, how about a girl like Rosie? There you are. Rosie, Rosie, Bobozi, Banana, Banana, Fofosi, Fifi, Momozi. Say it. Rosie. Let's do. Grant, 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 Bobant, Banana, Banana, Fofant, Fifa, Moment. Everybody say it. Grant. Great. Okay, let's do. Well, I just want to do you. You, you, Bobu, stand up. Banana, Banana, Fofu, Fifa, Momu. Say your name. I say you. I'm happy to see you here today. All right, let's do Miss Judy. Get your hand ready. You know the drill. Judy, Judy, Bo, Booty, Banana, Banana, Fo, Foody, Fee, Fa, Mo, Moody. Say it. Miss Judy. I'm so happy to see all you here, but why are we coming to Sunday school today? Why are you watching this on video? Why do we come to church to Sunday school when we can? Think about that. Of course. We come to church, we come to Sunday school, so we can learn about God, how to worship him, how to please him, how to obey him. That's why we're here. And I know you know the answer to this one. How do we learn about God? Where do we look? Of course, we look in the Bible. Let's sing our Bible song. Stand up, everybody, for this one. You have to stand tall. The B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E, Bible. And you know, as a matter of fact, right now is a great time. I would like you, if you're especially in like third, fourth, or fifth grade, I would like you to get yourself a Bible. I've got mine with me today. And mine looks like this, but they always look different. We're going to talk about where to look in our Bible. And you can stop the video, have someone help you, or if you can find it, I'd like you to go to the book of Matthew 25, these verses, 14 to 30. And if you remember, our Bible is in two parts. And the first part is the Hebrew scriptures, or we call it the Old Testament. It's about the people before Jesus was born. And then the last part, about this much, is the New Testament. And Matthew is the first book of the New Testament. So what I would like you to do is stop the tape, get your Bible, find this. You can use the table of contents or have someone help you. And then also everybody, I would like you to get yourself a piece of paper and something to draw with, like it could be crayons or markers. You can either stop the tape and do it right now, or you can have somebody do it while we're into our lesson. So do that right now. Okay, and then we're going to move on a little bit. Our story is from in Matthew. And our story this week, I love this story, is once again a parable. And I bet some of you remember what a parable is. A parable is simply a short little story that Jesus would tell his friends, his disciples, the people that were listening to him, but it always had a meaning, a special meaning, and a lesson that we can learn from. So the first word is parable. I bet you know that one. 
The second and the last word that I want to talk about today is the word talent. Or if I want to make it plural, make it mean more than one, it would be talents. Because the story we're going to talk about today is the parable of the talents. And Jesus told it to his friends. Now, in Jesus' age, when he was talking about talents, he was actually talking about money. So I'm going to put an arrow here pointing that talents can stand for money. So let's hear his story, and I'm going to draw a few little pictures here. All right, Jesus was talking to his friends, and he said that there was a very wealthy, a very rich man, a man who owned a lot of things. He was powerful. So I don't know how to show that this man is rich. I guess I'll put a fancy headpiece on him like this, and I'm going to make him look not that friendly because he was kind of powerful, he was rich, and I think he was kind of a hard boss. And he had three servants. Now, the three servants, I don't know, we'll just draw a circle for their heads, and then we'll get them some hair. How about a mustache on this guy? That's servant number one. Servant number two, we'll give him some spiky hair. And should we give him a beard? Okay, servant number two has a cute little beard. And servant number three has kind of, we'll just make it up like this. He's a good looking guy too. We'll give him a tattoo on his neck, just for fun. All right, so he had three servants, and he came to those three servants, the Bible tells us, and he said to servant number one and servant number two and servant number three, he gave them this idea. He said, you know what? I'm going to have to be leaving. I'm going to be going on a long journey. I'm going to be gone for a long, long time. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trust you with taking care of my wealth, my property, my money. In fact, he looked at servant number one and he said, I have a lot of faith in you. I'm going to give you five talents. And of course, we said that talents meant money. Now, I've just used pennies to put in this man's hand, but a talent back then was like more like a thousand dollars. It was a lot of money. And he said, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to be gone a long time. Here's five of my talents. And when I get back, I'm going to show up again and then I'm going to want it back. First servant says, Okay, hey, this is a good opportunity. The second servant, he said, And I don't quite know why, but he just gave this servant. Can you count here? Three talents. He said, I'm going to be gone a long time. I'm giving you the three talents. Use it as you need to, but remember, it's really my money. And then to this one, he gave one talent. And I'm not really sure why he gave them different amounts, but the fact is they each had talents. And then this wealthy man, he left. He went on a long journey. He was gone for a really long time. When he came back, of course, he went to each servant, and he started with servant number one, and he said, I think I remember I gave you five talents. And the servant said, I'm glad to see you back. Yes, here's your five talents. And that was like a really good thing, except when he opened up his hand, hold on a second here, he opened his hands, and lo and behold, he had doubled the amount of money, and he gave 10 talents back to the wealthy owner. And, you know, he must have done that by maybe planting some crops and then selling it and making more money. I'm not quite sure how he did it, but oh my goodness, the wealthy man, he was so happy. He said, oh, 
well done, good and faithful servant. You know, all good things are going to belong to you. I'm probably going to entrust you with even more of my money. Let's go party. He was like really happy about it. And the second servant, he said to him, I gave you three talents. What do you have for me now? And the servant, you can only guess, he handed him his money. And then he opened up both his hands. And lo and behold, he also had doubled his money. You know, you might say, well, how, how do people make money? How do they double their money like that? How do they do it? I want to tell you a real quick story about my own son. When he was in about fifth grade, he went on a field trip with his class, and he probably took some money along, and while he was on the trip, he bought some gum, then he a package of gum. Then he got on the bus, and he proceeded to sell each stick of gum for a lot more money than he had paid for the whole package. So he came home with more money than he started with. That's one way to make money. Or you can put money in a bank and it collects interest. The bank pays you for putting your money there. Well, let's keep going and let's go on to the third guy. And as you know, the third guy had just one piece. So, you know, I'm thinking when he hands it to the landowner, I hope he doubled his. Well, what happened is the landowner said, what do you have for me? And he said, well, you gave me one talent. And the landowner's like, and? Let me see in your hand. And the guy opened his hands. Okay, now the problem is he gave him back exactly what he had been given, nothing else. And that did not make the landowner too happy. He had said, well done to this guy. Well done to this guy. But this guy, he's like, didn't you make any money off the talent that I gave you? The least you could have done was put it in a bank and get interest for it. Here's what was his answer. He said, well, you know, I know that you're a hard man to deal with, and I know you're so wealthy, and I just didn't want to take a risk with this money and do anything that make me lose it. So I just took it out in my backyard and I dug a hole in the ground and I buried the money. His reaction was, you were not faithful. You did not use what you have been given. I don't even want you to be my servant anymore. And the parable said that he kicked him out. That's the end of the story. Now, a parable has meaning. So Jesus then explained to his disciples what all this means. In this parable, this man would be like God who owns everything. He has all the wealth in the world. Even the things that we think belong to us really belong to God, actually. These people here are us, the people of the world. And the talents... God doesn't necessarily give us money, but he gives us gifts of talents that we have, and that's the second meaning of talents. He gives us special skills or abilities, things that we can do easily that comes pretty easy to us. We might have to work at it, but we enjoy doing it. That's another kind of talent. And what Jesus was saying that no matter what gifts or talents you've been given, you need to use them. You can't just like hide them like this guy did. He buried his money in the, in the yard. We're supposed to use our special skills and our talents to honor God. You know, one thing I wondered, and you might be thinking the same thing, is, well, why did this guy get five and this guy only get three? It's the same when God gives us gifts. Sometimes we feel like some people have a lot more talents than we do, but that's okay. All you have to do is think about what gifts you have been given, what skills you have. Well, you might be thinking, this must just apply to my parents because I don't really have any skills or talents. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, yes, you do. 
And I brought today, <laughs> this is kind of funny, but I call this chest here, this is my talent treasure chest. And as you can see, my talent treasure chest is like I can't even get the lid down because it's overflowing. It's full of all kinds of things. We're going to look in there and see what some of our talents are. While we're looking at them, though, I want you to take your piece of paper and get something to draw with because I'm going to ask that you do some drawing on your paper and then you can keep it at home. And I'm going to do my own drawing here. Oh, we'll put it right here. So this, I know mine is big, but you just have a regular sheet of paper and some kinds of crayons or markers or a, even a pencil. And the first thing I'd like you to do on your paper is I want you to take your marker or crayon or whatever, and I want you to draw like a box or a rectangle here. And inside that box, I want you to write your name, maybe at the bottom, that would be fine. And then right in this part of it, you can draw a very quick sketch of yourself. Now, I know some of you like to add all kind of details to your drawings. That's fine. You can do that later. But for now, I want you to think about yourself being in that box. And your name is right there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look in my talent treasure chest, and we're going to talk about some of the different talents that God gifts people with. And if you think that's a talent that you have, I want you to draw a little picture somewhere around the edge of your paper that says, this is a talent that God has given me. I'm pretty good at that, or at least if I practiced a lot, I think I could be good at it. It comes pretty easily to me, maybe easier than to some other people. So here we go. Let's look. All right, first thing I see in here... Well, I see a lot of things, but I'm going to get out this one because I think you're all going to be able to draw a picture for this one. Now, I've got a baseball glove here, a softball, a baseball. I could have brought a golf ball, a football. For me, the only thing I was ever good at was I could ski, but I can't fit a big ski in that box. But if you feel like you're good at sports... And most kids feel like they're pretty good in sports. I'd like you to draw somewhere on your piece of paper that that is a talent that God has given you. And you might think, well, how can playing soccer be a talent? I'll actually draw a soccer ball up here. Or, I mean, you could draw a volleyball or you could draw any kind of a, here, maybe I'll draw like a ball like this. Or you could draw a tennis racket. Or you could draw a swimming suit because you're good at swimming. I don't know what you're good at, but that means you have a lot of energy and you have fun being with other people. And that's a talent because you can use that energy and that fun that you have with other people to help other people or to do things for other people. So being good in sports is a talent. Let's see, what else have I got here? Oh, yeah, this one. I love this one. <laughs> now, you may or may not be good at this one. Can you guess what I'm talking about? Cooking. Cooking is a talent. And maybe you think it's fun to help out in the kitchen. You can actually use that talent to honor God. You can help in the kitchen with your, with your parents with helping to cook or get a meal ready. Um, even if... They don't let you really do the cooking around the stove. You can still do things like empty the dishwasher or set the table or volunteer to clean up the kitchen, clear up all the dishes and the things, or carry the groceries in. There's a lot of ways that a person that likes to cook can use their talents to honor Jesus. All right, well, you might, you might wonder what this one is. This is a ukulele, and I've also got this one. And, of course, you know what talent this is. Whoops. I need to tighten up my string, strings, I guess. But for music, some of you really enjoy singing. 
Maybe you're learning how to play the piano. You're taking piano lessons. You're learning how to use an instrument. Everybody can, like, beat a drum or dance. And that's a talent that God gives people, and you can use it to encourage other people. If people are feeling discouraged, it's helpful if they hear you singing. You can sing songs that you've learned from Sunday school or worship music, and all that encourages yourself Plus, it honors God. That is a talent you absolutely can use to honor God. I should be drawing things up here like... You know, some people, like you might wish that you could play the guitar, and maybe you will someday. So if you feel like that's something that you would like to be good at, you should draw a picture up here of it. For cooking, I'm just going to draw a cupcake. There we go. All right, what else is in my talent box? Oh, this is a funny one. Do you recognize my Mr. Potato Head? The only weird thing about this Mr. Potato Head is he doesn't have eyes, a nose, ears, all he's got is a mouth. Has anybody ever told you you talk too much? <laughs> well, talking, talking can be a talent that you can use to honor God. Some people just naturally talk. They talk all the time. And you have a choice if you like to talk. You can talk and say encouraging words. You can say nice things kind words to people, words that build people up and make them feel good. Or, I mean, I guess mouths can be used also for bad things, but we don't want to talk about using bad words or insulting people. We want to talk about using a, the talent of talking for God, and you can use it. It's your choice. All righty. I think I'll draw like a mouth here for talking. That's a talent. All righty. How about, oh, this one. Uh, it's a set of watercolor paints and a set of markers. And kids, many kids, enjoy drawing. You know, the last time I did a Sunday school lesson, I asked you if you could draw a picture and text it to me. And I got a picture from Jack Strader. That kid has got a talent for drawing because he added so much detail in his drawing. It was like really fun and encouraging for me to look at. If you like to paint, draw, create things, think of somebody that you could do it for. There's a whole building out by the hospital of older people. It's called a nursing home, and the people that live there, unfortunately, right now, they are under lockdown. They can't even have their family come in to see them. It's really for their protection, but it's sad for everybody. And if they could get mail from a kid at our church, <laughs> with a drawing in it or something that you have created, if you enjoy doing that, that is a talent you can certainly use for God. Artistic ability, that's great. All right, now this one, I know a lot of you, oh, hold on, I wanna draw. Well, I lost my marker. Here I am talking about markers and I lost my marker. I'm going to draw a paintbrush here for artistic ability and a box of paints. All right, now I know many of you, especially you guys that are a bit older, some of you really enjoy reading. And I brought some books along. I've got different levels, like here's an Arthur book and a Horrible Harry book and a Little House on the Prairie book. Some of you are reading chapter books. If you love to read, you probably also are good at writing. And when I say writing, I mean making up stories or make writing letters. 
And that is definitely a talent. Not everybody has that talent. If you enjoy, here's a pencil and a piece of paper. If you enjoy writing and reading, then that is a talent you absolutely certainly can use to honor God. Um, I brought this along from home. It's just a box of little envelopes and note cards. So like this one says, brighter days are ahead. And then there's a little message in here. You could ask your parents who you could send a card to that would encourage them. It could be someone who's sick. Like this one says, sending sunshine and good wishes your way. Hope you feel better soon. You could address the envelope. You could write a little note up here and sign your name. And that would definitely be something that could honor God. Just by sending a card. Think of your grandparents, how much they would like to get a letter from you. Maybe they haven't seen you for a long time. So that's another thing that is a talent that you can use that perhaps God has gifted you with. All right, we've got a lot of things around here. And it looks like my box is, oh, it's not quite empty. What is this? It's a heart. <laughs> but you know what that makes me think of? Some talents you can't really see. They're qualities within a person that some people have certain talents. Like a person who's good at sports, you can see how fast they can run. Or a person that is good at cooking, you can eat their food. But this talent could be a talent like just having love and compassion for other people. Maybe you're the type of person that really loves pets and little animals and you feel sorry for them or if they get hurt or or you're extra loving and kind to little tiny like babies and little children or you have a compassion for older people that's a wonderful talent that you can use for God because you can show love and you can be kind to those people in many ways and here I've got one that you maybe never, ever thought of about yourself. Maybe you have the talent of praying. Have you ever thought of that as being a talent? But some people just naturally, they enjoy talking to God. Maybe they're alone in their bed. And instead of thinking about, the next TV show or what they're going to do the next day. Maybe you really enjoy thinking about Jesus and God and how much they love you. And when you think about them and when you talk to them in your heart, that's praying to them. That's like a talent. And I want to encourage you to, when you're by yourself, to talk to God. You don't have to say the words out loud. You can. Or you can just talk and you can pray for other people. Perhaps you want to pray for your family or your parents or people that are scared. But that is definitely a talent. If you think that you have that talent, you could draw some praying hands here, just like draw a hand and then another hand behind it, like praying. If you think you are a compassionate, very kind person, you can draw yourself a heart. Now, there are so many other talents that I have not mentioned, but here are just a sample of the ones that God, he has given you some talents. And the whole point of this is that we don't want to hide our talents because maybe we're afraid. What if somebody laughs at us if I try to sing? No, go ahead and sing. Don't bury your talents. Try something new. Take a risk. Ask your parents if they know somebody who's in the nursing home. You might not even know that person. Draw them a picture. Write them a little letter. Send it off. That's a talent that God has given you, and we're supposed to use our talents. 
were supposed to take risks like these guys did that doubled their talents. Now, their talents were money. That's different than what we're talking about. But don't be afraid to try something new. Try to honor God with your talents. You've been given it. And now as I end today, I would like to tell you about a little girl that I know. Her name is Bregan. And Bregan is, I'd say, about seven or eight years old. Bregan is in a family, and that family are missionaries in a place called the Dominican Republic. And there is a chance that maybe at church you have known someone who has gone to the Dominican Republic public on a mission trip. That is an island. You like fly in an airplane to Florida and then you fly another three hours out over the ocean and you come to this island. The name of the country is the DR, we call it for short. And Bregan and her mom and dad and her little brother, they are missionaries in the Dominican Republic. Now, the reason I wanted to tell you about Bregan is because she has a very special talent a talent that I don't have, and I bet you probably don't have either. Bregan can speak Spanish. That is a talent. She can learn another language. And, of course, she honors God with that talent by going to school in the Dominican Republic. She has a lot of friends in the Dominican Republic who only speak Spanish. And so Bregan can tell them about Jesus and help them to learn about God. And that's a wonderful talent that a kid has. So as we end today, I want to pray for all of us that we would follow Jesus' advice and use our skills, our talents, to honor God and to honor Jesus. We also want to say a special prayer, prayer for Bregan as well. When we pray, you can close your eyes. I do. You can fold your hands if you want to. You don't have to. But what you really need to do is think about what we're saying to God when we're talking. Here we go. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, first of all, we want to tell you that we love you very much. We thank you for the lessons, the stories that you've put in the Bible so we can learn how to please you and how to please God. I pray for every child that's listened to this lesson today. I pray that you would help them to understand that they have many talents that they can use for you. And we want to say a special prayer for this missionary, Bregan, and for her family in the Dominican Republic as they're trying to help other people to learn about you and to learn about the Bible. Be with us in this coming week. We thank you very much, Jesus. Amen. So I want to say goodbye to you. I hope you have a wonderful week ahead. Don't forget, God has given you, he's gifted you with talents. Just like our parable told us, don't forget to use those talents. And I'll see you the next time. Bye-bye.